Hey guys and welcome to new video. Today I want to present you my take on the dual wielding Nebulok uh, Pure Fire Consecrated Path, uh, yeah, Juggernaut. And before we go into any kind of detail about gear and stats and whatever you need, oh wait a second, I just hit my microphone. Uh, let's go for a Minotaur run just to show you how freaking beefy that character is. What is this? Bloodline resistance? Oh god. Even less recovery rate. Oh nice! Okay, we got matching monster, we have something, I have no idea. I'm too bored to read. I, I don't think there is like... Elemental reflect and the rest, we should actually be fine. Yeah, let, let's see how, how bad this map is uh, actually is. So, yeah, it's Consecrated Path and... As you know me as a player, so maybe you watched one or two videos of me uh, already, you know that I'm freaking lazy. So all I actually like is to play characters that use one button. Uh, this is... It's not really a one button character, but it is pretty one... Uh, pretty much one character... Uh, one button character, God damn it! So you could actually jump around, but yeah, why for you? You freaking have consecrated paths, so all you gotta do is just... Hit your consecrated path and just blow things up, and this is actually quite enjoyable. It is not the fastest mapper, and it is not the fastest uh, boss killer, but... It's freaking beefy, and it's so fun to play consecrated path, man. I love this kill, I don't know. Uh, if you think, like, this is, like, way too slow, you can actually, um... Oh, God. I make it even look slower than it is, actually. Just because of my glorious playstyle here. Um, I have, um... Bright Beak and Prismatic Eclipse in my offense, so I just hit Weapon Swap, right? And I'm like uh, super fast, but yeah. The damage suffers a little bit from it, but it's actually enough to kill like every kind of, uh, yeah, up to Guardian maps. Just for Guardian, please take Nebulox, because you want to have like more damage and more survivability and uh, that kind of stuff, right? So yes, I know already you'll be like, Oh no, you, you copied that build from Engineering Eternity, how can you? Uh, you copied it from Morph, you copied it from everywhere. Uh, like, uh, yes, there is no freaking build that doesn't exist already, unless like, there is like something super cool. Uh, anyway, so, Morph was actually the guy that was firstly taken to Delph 1000 solo. Um, and he was playing with that build, so that inspired me pretty much to play that kind of build. And Engineering Eternity was the second guy that actually posted, or at least like, posted the video guide about this kind of build. So whoever you call a faker, I think like everybody who did Nebulox after Morph is pretty much a faker. So yeah, take it. Uh, I watched uh, Engineering Eternity's video, it's very good, I can definitely recommend it. And yeah, this is my take on that with a little adjusted skill tree and stuff, right? Okay. So we are here at Minotaur now, uh, you will see that the character itself is actually pretty tanky. We run about 90% uh, physical damage reduction with 80% uh, all resistance. And as you see the damage is quite slow. Oh wait, he got a massive amount of attack speed, but let's see. If I just hold up here my hands... The face tank is real, the life regeneration is real. Okay, let's, let's still just try to get this boss down. It's... If you play Reef, Blade Fury or something, or Blade Vortex, this feels like you're sleeping. And yes, sometimes it does, but you're like super tanky and... Yeah, as soon as you have your 10 Endurance charges, nothing is actually killing you. Alright, that is enough for the showcase. Just if you're wondering why I'm wearing that belt here, that gives you physical damage uh, once you use a movement skill. So, and Shaper, Uber, Elder and stuff. I just switch this one in, jump around like one, two times and you see that my endurance charges are going up or instantly going to 10, whatever, if I got the proc, but seems like... Oh, on the last one, okay, whatever. So basically before Uber, I just switch this belt in, jump a little bit around and yeah, I get my endurance charges uh, because of that. Okay, how is this build working? What makes it so tanky and... yeah. Endurance charges, that's actually the magic word. Uh, you wanna have a lot of endurance charges, so... How do we get endurance charges? Um, basically, uh, we're Juggernaut, so if you ever play Juggernaut... You just generate... Yeah, endurance charges if you get hit or... Uh, on this build specifically, if you damage, if you stun something, uh, whatever, like... Yeah, you just get endurance charges, like 10 out of it, uh, if you're lucky and get unflinching proc, right? 
So basically three is the regular one. Then we have one over here we, uh, from unflinching makes it four. Then we have uh, one, two, three over here makes it seven. Then we have two double KM's ways makes it nine. And I have KM's roots with a plus one endurance charge corruption, which is 10 endurance charges. So what does 10 endurance charges mean? We get a lot of defense um, and offense, but more defense actually, because we get like all resistance, I think four all resistance per endurance charge, also 1% physical damage mitigation per endurance charge. And with Nebulox, we get another physical damage, uh, chaos resistance, elemental damage reduction, armor, and the downside fire damage. Okay, so <laughs> basically uh, we have 10 endurance charges. It says 2 and 5 damage taken per second per endurance charge, which means we have 10, so it's 2,000, right? And oh wait, we were 2 of those, so it's 4,000. But we were low wave to have 80 max resistance, so with all the damage mitigation we have, I think it's about 600 damage flat left that we actually get from the Nebulox, and with with a massive region of like, I don't know, like 2,500 with uh, Watcher's Eye Vitality and stuff, um, it's really nothing, right? It's it's really easy to out-sustain, uh, and we have Leech on top of that, right? So yeah, Nebulox, um, just try to get 40% physical damage as extra fire damage, that gives you a massive DPS boost. Or before we start with the other gear, make sure, like, if you're going to build in Molten Strike, what many people are doing, because it's way better boss DPS, and yes, it is, you're just gonna adjust your skill tree and, and use things like Point Blank and um, Iron Grip for uh, for more damage and uh, the Molten Strike Helm Enchant. And on bosses or Uber Elder and stuff, I mean, mostly you can just play with Consecrated Path, it's okay damage, but for all those more beefy Guardians, Shaper, Elder Guardians, Uber Elder and so on, you kind of want to use Molten Strike. Uh, I just, I'm too lazy. I am I say it like it is. I'm too lazy. I'm too lazy to switch out gems and I'm too lazy to use another skill and I just, I like Consecrated Pass, so I, I'm, I'm enjoying this one, okay? So even with my setup, with the low DPS, I was able to kill four or five times Uber Elder already. So that was a, actually my first time I ever killed Uber Elder. I've never killed Uber Elder before. I, I, I try it every leak like once, like I always have a build that clears the whole Atlas on the first week. So on the first week I tried to do Uber Elder, but for Uber Elder you need like a little bit more gear than you get in one week, unless you find a mirror or something, right? That's why I never tried it after that. But yeah, this was the first character I've actually uh, done Uber Elder. So. It is quite enjoyable, I have to say. I fail a lot on Uber Elder because I'm not so used to the mechanics, but I think uh, like last try was like, I died once in the last phase because there was so much bad stuff on the ground, right? Uh, but it's mostly like me failing and not like uh, the character isn't uh, able to do it. Okay, like I said, damage. If you wanna really push your single target damage and push the character even more in terms of uh, viability, is viability even a word? I don't know. Yeah, didn't go Molten Strike. Okay, um, yeah, I'm a pure and uh, Consecrated Path uh, Juggernaut. So we went over the, the Nebulox, so let's go for the Helm. I have a Consecrated Path enchant, um, and I use the fossils to craft the nearby enemies have 9% fire resistance, like reduction, and life. So I use those two slotted resonators to put in the life one and the fire, more fire, less something else. Uh, forgot the name. No, I don't know. I, never mind. You just Google it and uh, you get that. And then you just craft uh, the helm. It works basically like an alchemy orb or chaos orb spamming, whatever resonators you need, right? Okay, so uh, chest, low weave. Yeah, low weave is probably one of the best armors in the game. Not one of the best, it's actually the best, I would say, because the 80% max resistance is so valuable. You, you don't even have an idea how valuable this is. If you, if you count in like you have increased physical damage, increase this, increase that, increase that, increase this all like formed up together, okay? But this one, if you have 100% lightning resistance, you're immune to lightning damage, okay? So what this means is instead of 75% reduction, you have 80% reduction. That's about roughly like 20% more effective HP. So I would rather use unless you play Righteous Fire or something, I would rather use a Law Weave instead of a Chaos because yeah, Chaos give you a ton of life, we all know that. But 
having so much mitigation, you know? You saw before, uh, what did we kill, like Minotaur, right? Uh, he hits like very, like a truck. And also like all the, the tier 16 maps, I only have like 6k life. But I have so much mitigation of damage and damage reduction, every kind of stuff like that, that I don't really need a 10k life pool, right? So yeah, Lore Weave is just sexy. You have all attributes, physical damage, increased crit chance. Uh, yeah, forget about increased rarity, mana, na, na, na. elemental damage, and obviously 80% uh, max resists. Okay, uh, Tomb Fists, kind of obvious uh, because uh, Consecrated Path is a melee skill and we also need a hit cap for that. Like, as long as you have more than like 90, 92, 93%, you're like, I would say like everything that's above 90 is actually good, right? And that's why we have this ascendancy here that gives us a thousand plus strength as accuracy or something. So that boosts our accuracy quite a lot. So I don't really have to take any kind of accuracy in my gear to hit the 90%, which is very good. Okay. Uh, for the boots, as I said, I got Kaum's roots with a plus one endurance charge. They were about 10 exalts, I think. Seven exalts. Oh yeah, that's just because they have 200 life. Like they, <laughs> why would you go for perfect? Like if... We feel like so dumb as I am and pay like seven exalts for them. Uh, yeah, you do that. Uh, otherwise, you just take the 190 life and pay like two X or so and you're fine, right? Um, two KM's ways to get more life regeneration uh, and endurance charges, obviously. Um, soft spot uh, for the damage penetration. We have avatar fire, so we have purely fire damage. Um, if you don't, if you can't afford this one, you just, uh, yeah, skill into here, avatar fire, like two points. If you take this skill tree, um, and you're fine, right? Uh, the belt is pretty much increased life recovery rate. That's an elder base uh, stat. And I yeah, had a hard time balancing because you have a lot of fire resistance coming from soft blood and all the other stuff. So how do you actually uh, get your resistances balanced? So you have to do it with, uh, yeah, jewels, abyss jewels, or yeah, the rare belt and the rare helmet. So we have we only have two rare items to balance our resistances, right? All right, next thing. We went over the gear, so let's go for the my gem slots, right? In my helmet I have Vitality for life regeneration, Herald of Ash for physical damage as extra fire, Purity of Elements, as I just said, we have a problem uh, getting our resistances up, so that's why I choose this one. And then Lightning Support to have uh, yeah less mana reservation to sustain it easier. Like, I can put it out, but then I have 37 mana, that's actually... Yeah, one cast and then I'm having a problem, right? So you really want to have Enlightenment into this setup or just if you can't afford the Enlightened, then take out, I don't know, like Purity of Elements or even Herald of Ash. Like you want to have, if you have 10 million DPS, but you're the Glass Cannon, you're just dead. You you have zero DPS actually, right? So if you skip uh, like Herald of Ash, in that case, you still have enough mana to basically uh, sustain it, right? So, um, yeah, Nebulox, we said already. Um, Oh, wait, we are, we are gems. Okay, Consecrated Path links with Elemental Damage with Attack Support, Damage on Full Life, Melee Physical Damage, Endurance Charge on Melee Stun, and Elemental Focus. Okay, why Endurance Charge on Melee Stun? 4% um, more damage per Endurance Charge. We run 10 Endurance Charges, that's like quite a lot of Endurance uh, damage, right? And yeah, we gain an Endurance Charge when you stun an enemy with a healing mid from Supported Skill, and we stun quite a lot. I tell you that. All right, in my gloves I have Enduring Cry and Blood Rage, um, yeah, for more attack speed and also if we actually, um, yeah, if we build in an Immortal Call, that's something I don't really want to do because if you have Endurance Charges and Immortal Call, it soaks up your Endurance Charges and you get increased duration, but in the end you have no Endurance Charges. And with this build you really want to have Endurance Charges. That's why I actually have Immortal uh, Enduring Cry, so I charge in Enduring Cry and then I start DPS. I mean, they, they hold like 19 seconds or something. So it's just the first thing you're gonna do on the map or Delph or Guardians or whatever you do, you're gonna use Enduring Cry just to get your Endurance Charges, right? And if you have Endurance Charges, you don't need to do it, okay? Easy. Okay, um, we have Leap Slam with Blood Magic and Faster Attacks. Here would be 45, actually. I think I played with 45 for quite a long time. I have like... Yeah, 45 double here because I used them in my weapon swap as well. Same leap slam, 45 and faster attacks. Why do I run blood magic then? Yeah, because I have 10% um, chance to gain 45 when you stun an enemy with melee damage, right? I stun a lot, I get 45, so why should I skill it? If I get 45 all the time, right? 
So yeah, uh, in the offhand I have cast one damage taken with a Molten Shell and Enfeeble. That's something that I just put in because like it's not really needed. I was like, yeah, Molten Shell gives you more armor. Is it is it mandatory? No, it's not. Like, Enfeeble just, you know, what is what is uh, what do you want to achieve in this game? Like Guardian Shaper, Uberella, and so on, and they have re reduction to curses. So. Yes, I have it in. Yes, it is a little bit more sustained because they do a little bit less damage. But yeah, I mean, if we don't have it, then the world will not break down, right? Okay, uh, gear is fine. We went over this, that, 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 that. What about enchants? We have no enchants. We use... Yeah, well, Tomb Fist could actually go for enchants. Like, there is this enchant, I think Fury or something, where your weapon just throws everywhere. Like, get this one that looks cool. <laughs> But not mandatory or if you can get get like elemental weakness on hit but yeah have fun uh yeah valing your tomb fists other than that i have here onslaught uh corruption which is actually good but as i said like it's nice to have like many things that i use is nice to have but is it like necessary no do i have it yes why because i have currency i don't know i probably spent more than 50 exalts already in this build so but yeah, it's perfect Chaos Way, perfect Soft Heart, perfect this one, perfect that one. I mean, it costs a lot. So basically, uh, like, um, how much currency do you need to build this character? Um, Nebulox with 40%, like 1x, 1x is 2x, like Soft Blood maybe 10x, Chaos Way is a 2.5, 8x on this one. So probably like 20, 30 exalts, pretty much. It's not cheap, but it's... A lot of fun to play and I really enjoyed it uh, since the last couple of days. All right, let's go with the flask really quick. Uh, bleed immunity and oh my god, I got a hard hit. I heal now. Good. Uh, sulfur flask, uh, we get consecrated path when we are actually teleporting with this one. So this is more like if, I, if, if I'm staying still and I don't want to teleport around, I just use this flask and still get my consecrated path and 40% damage on top of that. Lion's Roar for 25%. More, more, more is important. More is the better one, not increased. More melee physical damage. Um, the Wise Oak, if you can balance it. And yeah, another Dalene Flask to run faster. Why even? I don't know. I just have it. Okay. Skill Tree. Ascendancies. Um, now, I, I know that I will get the comment, like, what should I go first? What should I go second? Like, uh, pfft. I don't know, like unflinching and then unrelenting, maybe because of the endurance charges and the physical damage mitigation. Uh, and then go probably for accuracy and the last thing is unyielding just to get uh, the more damage and area of effect and stuff. Like, I think like one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah, do it like that. Something like that. Okay. So unflinching, yeah, when we get hit, we get uh, endurance charges um, and yeah, we have a chance like 30, 25%, 25% to get instantly all endurance charges. So uh, if I would regenerate like one endurance charge, I get 10. That's great. And yeah, unyielding gives us more damage as said. This gives us more uh, physical damage reduction and unenable for the massive, massive accuracy bonus. Okay, in terms of skill tree, uh, yeah, we go here, we take some accuracy more actually uh life melee damage one-handed more that's uh the cluster for uh, maces because we are using maces right and orange charge very important uh jewel slot juggernaut for more armor we have uh lava leash for damage penetration another jewel slot and orange charge jewel slot life whatever and some more uh leech uh, of this one i think the 0.4 percent attack damage leech this mana is actually enough to sustain uh your consecrated path if you spam it. Then we go over here, take another jewel slot, uh, another endurance charge, more life, damage penetration. It's actually the same. Like uh, here we get elemental overload because we are not like a crit crit multi base character. Otherwise, this would be a bad step because you don't have a multiplier anymore. But since we are actually able to crit because we not we don't run resolute technique or something, uh, this is a massive boost to our damage since we have pure fire damage. And then I went up here, and this was the last thing I took in just because of the lack of damage we have. At least, it feels for me, if you ever played the Reef Blade Flurry or Elemental Hit or something like that, this character feels like pretty slow in DPS, but you have like a massive tankiness standing behind it. So yeah, fights take longer, but it's actually pretty easy and GG. Okay, 
Jewels. Um, yeah, my jewels are basically, this one is the only one to balance my resistance basically because I have cold resistance over here, lightning resistance over here, fire resistance over here. So as you see, 59, 59, 46. So just this, uh, just life and lightning resistance uh, was the only thing to balance my uh, resistances. Other than that, I spend like five chaos orbs each. I'm not gonna lie. Max life resistances. Okay, next one. Max life resistances. Do we have another slot over here? Um, what is this? Max life resistances. Wow, they are like five chaos. So the only valuable one is this watch's eye, which uh, with the increased life recovery rate while affected by vitality, which boosts our survivability by quite a ton because it boosts both life regeneration and life leech, right? And we have both. We have about two and a half thousand, three thousand life regeneration and about 2,000 uh, life leech. That's insane. We have like 5,000 life per second, right? And yeah. Yeah, that's skill tree. Um, yeah, just I, I just posted a path of building link on the bottom side of the video and you can just import it and see what I actually have and what, yeah. So basically the next step I, step I would do is just replacing the jewels just because they suck. They just have life and resistance. I have nowhere like damage mods on it, right? So... I should basically do that to just finally get some more DPS out of it. Okay, we talked about the jewels, the Ascendancy, the skill tree. What about Pantheons? I'm using Soul of Arakali, so for less damage take uh, damage taking over time. And also, if I stop taking damage over time recently, um, I get another 50% life recovery rate. Here I use Soul of Tukuhama. When I stand still, I get more life regeneration. When I'm going Uber Elder, I take Soul of Yugul. And I will do that right now, because tomorrow when I do Uber Elder, I forget about this <laughs> again. Okay, um, yeah, MTX. We have Wasteland Helm with Red Glowing Eyes, Double Seraph Sword with Double Forge and Extra Gore Effect. We have the Infernal Wings with Ultimate Chaos Body Armor, Kitava Gloves and Boots, the Ultimate Chaos Footprints, Ultimate Chaos Character Effect, Kitava Portrait Frame, that doesn't really care, doesn't matter. Demon King Portal Effect and yeah, a lot of uh, fancy stuff over here. That actually the cool aura here with the triple resistances here is uh, Purity of Elements. Automaton Herald Effect, Carnage Vitality Effect, Molten Shell. Why don't I have a Molten Shell MTX? Oh, there is none. Okay, makes sense. And yeah, Sin Leap Slam. I actually want to have the other one, the, the Demonic Leap Slam, because it's like so beautiful and it just matches my Demonic character, but money is short, so I can't really get, so maybe next month. <laughs> so yeah, uh, all in all, I have to say it's a very fun character to play. Um, as I said, if you really want to go to the top, uh, you gonna play with Molten Strike, you gotta have to, and take Consecrate Path uh, for clearing. Yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, enjoyed the, pre uh, the build pretty much. I did Uber Elder with this car uh, character, finally. I'm, like, I haven't done him in last league and two leagues before, so I'm a pretty bad player. But even I could do this carry uh, the, the Uber Elder with this uh, kind of character. Uh, I think that was enough talking. Do I have to say anything more? No. Oh, yes. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.